I've been a Unity game dev for nearly five years at this point, so I figured it was time to try out some new engines, starting with Godot, and, well, I have some opinions. To try out Godot, I'm just going to spend a few days in the engine building a quick game. The goal of the game is just to make something small, something that gives me a tour of the engine. I want to make this into a series where I try out just about every popular game engine and programming library to see how they're different, compare them all to each other, and to help myself make more informed decisions in the future whenever I start future game projects. If you're interested, then be sure to comment any engines you want me to try out in the future. So the game I'm going to make this time is a Hotline Miami inspired top down shooter. Specifically, I think it'd be cool to create an enemy that behaves similar to the enemies in Hotline Miami and build a couple of stages around them. I'm using this ninja asset pack for the project, and there's a link in the description to it. And I don't really want to spend that much time on making art, so I'm just using this. So let's get into development and my first seed thoughts over the engine. So first off, Gido is super easy to install, or in my case, get updated to the latest version. So that took like two seconds. I originally started messing around with Gido way back in 2020, but a lot has changed since then. So I just started off with this little game project by implementing some top-down movement into the game. One of Gido's defining features is the node system. Nodes are a bit like standard game objects from an engine like Unity but they have a better name and they're quite a bit more streamlined. Nodes can be of exactly one type and they can have exactly one script attached to them. There aren't like multiple components or anything. So if you need a bunch of scripts and types of nodes or something, then you just need to add a bunch of child nodes. And yeah, the system is beautiful and super simple. Whenever you're programming, you don't have to get references to the specific scripts on the node, because it's only ever one. And structuring the project is super simple and straightforward. I often find myself practically replicating this system in Unity anyways, and it just makes sense to separate scripts from each other via parenting. And I implemented top-down movement of animations through some simple scripts and nodes. But one problem that I never really fixed is that there is a slight delay between the starting block and the animation actually switching a game. I have no idea what is causing this to happen, as I have the transition set to be instant, but it's not super noticeable. The other most obvious difference from Unity is that it uses its own made-up programming language, GDScript. Now, C-Sharp is also a weird made-up Microsoft language, but that's besides the point. GDScript is based on Python, which means it looks completely naked. I mean, where are the semicolons, the parentheses, the little spiky things? But GDScript itself is actually super well done, and also well integrated into the engine. It's still an evolving language, and a couple years ago I had more complaints about it, but it's been evolving so fast that this section is really short because all my complaints have already been fixed. Speaking of programming in Godot, another cool program that now has full GD script and C-sharp support built in is the Writer IDE by JetBrains, which is the IDE that I used in this video and is also the sponsor of this video. JetBrains Writer and WebStorm are now free for non-commercial use, and Writer is the ultimate IDE for .NET development. It supports every game engine, with built-in support for Godot, Unity, and Unreal Engine. I started using them for developing my main project, Mythomania, as well as this Godot project, and it's a blast to work with. Writer is designed for speed and responsiveness, and its intelligent code completion and code templates have both sped up my development across the board. JetBrains Writer is a truly cross-platform IDE, as it provides a seamless development experience across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. JetBrains also have an AI Assistant, which is seamlessly integrated into all their IDEs, including Writer. The AI Assistant can auto-complete single lines, functions, and entire blocks of code, aligning with your coding style, project context, and naming conventions, you can use it as much or as little as you want to. You can also answer any questions you have, automate tedious tasks, and is invaluable for debugging. So if you're interested, then use the link in the description to use Writer for free for non-commercial development. Thank you to JetBrains for sponsoring this video, and now, back to development. So the next step in development was shooting. So I added some gun movement and made a spawn bullets, and then I went on to making these guns have unique stats and pickups. And while getting all these systems up and running, I ran into one of my new favorite parts of Godot, the physics layer, masks, and groups. Every node could be a member of as many physics layers, physics masks, and groups as you want them to, instead of just being able to be in one. And this lets me easily do things like make a damageable group that has all the objects in it that be hurt by bullets or melee attacks. And then for the player, Breakable objects and enemies, they can all be part of this damageable group while also being part of individual player, damageable object, and enemy groups. And the physics layers and mask are super nice, as it allows me to easily turn on and off different layers and their collisions with each other during runtime, which is a bit more complicated with Unity. And overall, all three of these systems are a clear improvement over the Unity equivalents, and I really hope that we can at least get tags reworked in the future to be a bit more like groups, where you can assign multiple tags to one object, is that makes more sense with the name tags, and also Unity tags are currently kind of a weird feature, they're basically just a renamed version of Unity's physics layers, so it seems weird to have two of the same, why not update tags to be more useful? Anyways, I now have a shooting weapon that can be shot, picked up, and thrown, plus a default melee attack and a dash that I threw in for fun. So it was trying to make the meat of this game, the enemy. I want enemies to be pretty smart. 
They'll patrol a ramp path or stand in place until they see a player. Then they'll either run at the player, or if they need a gun and don't have one, they'll focus on looking around to see if there's a gun to pick up, which makes both pretty dangerous whenever you kill a gun enemy. If the other enemies around them could grab the gun that they draw. You can also do some smart moves, like throwing your gun around a corner and then killing the enemy whenever they go for it. Implementing all this behavior took a couple of days and a ton of bug fixing. In order to get the patrolling to work, and also be easily adjustable in the editor, I figured out how to use Pathfollow 2D nodes. For the enemies spotting the player in pickups, I just used a raycast and a sight collider, making sure that the player is in a sight collider and that the collider isn't blocked by a wall before we start chasing the player. Plus, if the player escapes, then the enemy stores a player's last seen position and walks over to it, and looks around to try to find the player again. I also implemented pathfinding for the enemies to keep them from getting stuck on walls. And by the way, I didn't expect there to even be pathfinding built into Godot, but not only is it there, but it's also super simple and easy to implement. It only took me like two lines of code to switch the enemies from just running straight at the player to pathfinding towards them, which I was just really impressed by. So after many, many, many hours of work on the enemy, it now mostly works. I then made two levels. Yeah, only two. I don't really like level design, and I think they showed off most of the interesting things that can be done with just the one enemy type and gun. If I was making a proper game, I'd add a lot more mechanics. But as it is, the two levels are pretty fast and frantic, and the enemy AI, while being a tiny bit buggy, generally does work in most situations, and can be pretty dangerous. So, I made a little game. What did I learn? Well, I learned that, unsurprisingly, most parts of Godot just work. The engine is super lightweight and doesn't really have any fluff or overly specific nodes that don't really do anything. But I was also surprised by just how complete features like pathfinding and tile maps are. Overall, it wasn't too hard to adapt to the workflow from Unity, especially using Rider, which is very well implemented in the GG script. My biggest problem with Godot right now is that it doesn't really have a great answer to Unity's scene view with active game running. I love being able to pause and go through and look at the scene of the game and also do all sorts of debug stuff through the inspector. And while some of that is definitely possible in Godot, the inspector in Godot is just a bit less featured and less easy to work with and less easy to work with than Unity sims. Unity is especially nice for me because I use a paid asset called Odin Inspector, which isn't really fair because, you know, I'm paying more money for the asset, but it is a big part of my workflow, so it's also an important part of what I consider between Godot and Unity. But either way, I will seriously keep Godot in mind for future projects, especially 2D ones. It's just a really nice engine to work with, and I do like supporting open source projects as they are just super nice and great to have, especially this one is being developed so quickly. But that's all for this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos over other game engines in the future. And also comment which engines you want me to try. Check out my main game, Mythomania, which is an action platform or roguelike where you fight every god from every mythology. You know, if you're interested. And thanks again to JetBrains for sponsoring this video. Use the link in my description to use Rider for free for non-commercial development. Thanks for watching. Bye.